Here we're going to look at a nice problem from the 1986 Spanish Math Olympiad. And there are a couple of things that I think are interesting about this problem. One is that it uses some fairly advanced ideas from number theory. And another one is that it's kind of a grindy problem. In other words, you have to do a lot of like intermediate calculations to come up with the solution. And these two things make me think that this is like kind of an old style of problem. Notice it's from 1986, which is quite a while ago at this point. And nowadays, problems are not so grindy and they don't really use advanced techniques like this anymore. They use like tricks. Okay, so anyway, let's see what the problem is. Our goal is to find all natural numbers including zero, so that's really like non-negative integers. We'll call them n such that 5 to the n plus 3 is a power of 2. Okay, so usually when you're trying to find a problem like this, there's either an infinite family or more likely there's only a couple of small examples of this phenomenon. You find those small examples and then you prove that there aren't any more examples. So we'll start by finding some small examples and then we'll prove that those are all of the examples. Okay, so let's do that by looking for powers of two first. So notice that two to the one, well that's obviously equal to two, but notice that two cannot be written in the form five to the n plus three because five to the n plus three is at least one plus three, which is four. Now, 2 squared, well, that's equal to 4, but that's 5 to the 0 plus 3. So this actually does give us a solution. This gives us the solution n equals 0. Now let's do 2 cubed. So that's going to be equal to 8. Well, that's 5 to the 1 plus 3. So n equals 1 also gives us a solution. Now let's look at two to the four, which is 16. So this does not give us a solution. Notice that we would have to use five to the one in our solution, but this is like five to the one plus 11. So that doesn't work here. So similarly, I'll let you guys check two to the five and two to the six don't work, but two to the seven does work. So let's notice that two to the seven is 128. But that's 125 plus 3, which is 5 cubed plus 3. So that gives us a solution of n equals 3. So there we've got three solutions. And maybe the point here is this is up to which power of 2? 2 to the 7. So here we have 2 to the 2, 2 to the 3, and 2 to the 7. So what we'd like to show is that these are the only solutions and we'll do that by using this power of two that we have achieved here. So we'll assume that we've got a solution where the power of two is larger than seven. So let's do that. So by way of contradiction, let's assume we have M and N where M is bigger than seven and five to the N plus three is equal to two to the M. Great. But if M is bigger than seven, then that means that it is a multiple of 256 because 256 is the next multiple of or power of two, I should say. If m is bigger than seven, then it's bigger than or equal to eight. That's you know kind of obvious. So m is bigger than or equal to eight. So that means this is equal to 256 times something. And I'll just put box here for something just so that we don't introduce a new variable. But now we'd like to reduce modulo 256. And that's gonna be the real trick here is we're working mod 256. So let's do that. So this is congruent to zero mod 256. Great. So let's see what we've done here. We've motivated looking modulo 256. 
Great. Another thing that we notice is that we're working with this five to the n plus three term. So we probably want to explore powers of five mod 256. And so that's just kind of based off this fact that we're working mod 256, which is motivated by that previous discussion. So let's do that. Look at five to the something mod 256 to see if we can get an idea of what's going on here. So the first thing that we're gonna make use of is Euler's theorem. So Euler's theorem says that if A and a number N are relatively prime, then A to the phi of N, where phi is Euler's totient function, is congruent to one mod N. And what does phi of N do? Well, it counts the number of numbers which are relatively prime to N and are between one and N. So for us, that tells us that five to the phi of 256 is congruent to one modulo 256. So we really need to find phi of 256, but there's a nice formula for that. So phi of 256, well that's phi of a power of a prime and phi of maybe p to the k is equal to p to the k minus p to the k minus one. So for our setup, that's gonna be two to the eight minus two to the seven, because here our k is eight, and thus our k minus one is seven. That's 256 minus 128, so that's 128. So putting these two facts together, tells us that we have five to the 128 is congruent to one modulo 256. Great, so that's good news. Now we're gonna use something called the order of an integer modulo n. So the order of an integer modulo n must divide the Euler totient function phi of n. And it's the smallest number so that when you raise whatever to that number, you get one. Now another thing that we're gonna use here, and this is why I say we're using like kind of um, advanced things from number theory here, is the notion of primitive roots. And so only the numbers two, four, p to the k and two times p to the k, where p is an odd prime, have primitive roots modulo, you know, themselves. So 256 is not one of those forms. So since 256 is not one of those forms, that means that putting this all together, the order of five mod 256 will not be equal to 128. So that means it has to be a divisor of 128. But since it's a divisor of 128 and 128 is a power of a prime, then it has to divide 64, which is one less the power of that prime. Okay, nice. So putting this all together, we see that five to the 64 is congruent to one modulo 256. Okay, so that's looking good. So now that we've got this set up right here, we're actually maybe kind of good to go as far as working towards the end of the problem. So let's notice that we'd like to solve this congruence up here that I'll maybe underline in brown. So we have five to the n plus three is congruent to zero mod 256. So let's see, that means what we'd really like to solve is five to the n is congruent to negative three mod 256, but that's gonna be 253 modulo 256. Now, how would we do that? Well, here's where it gets kind of grindy. I think what you would like to do is just find powers of five modulo 256. There might be a little bit of a trick here using the fact that five to the 32 squares to one from this green box equation, but I'm not so sure that that trick really helps you so much. So like I said, maybe we could make a list n and then five to the n mod 256, and then just like start reducing. 
So for n equals 1, we get 5. For n equals 2, we get 25. For n equals 3, we get 125. And then let's see, 125 is the same thing as negative 101. I'm not sure that helps. But for n equals 4, we get 625, which we can reduce to 113. So this is the same thing as 113. Then you can multiply 113 by 5 and then really keep going. Now there are some tricks to make this a little bit simpler. But since we don't know what exponent we'll achieve here, then those tricks are not really useful. So what ends up happening is you'll need n equals 35. And you'll see that 5 to the 35 is, in fact, congruent to negative 3 or 253 mod 256. So that tells us that we have 5 to the 35 plus 3 is congruent to 0 mod 256. But that doesn't tell us that this number over here is equal to 35 because we're working modulo 256. We're not working in the integers right here. Furthermore, by Euler's theorem, we know that these exponents work mod to mod 64. It's not quite by Euler's theorem, it's by the order of 5 mod 256. So that means this number here is really 35 mod 64, which tells us that what we really have here is 5 to the, let's see, 64 times k plus 3 plus plus 35 and then plus 3 is congruent to 0 mod 256. So in other words, our solution, our n, will be of this form 64k plus 3. Okay, so now let's take that information to the top of the next board and then finish this off. So on the last board we did a lot of calculation, but that all ended up at this kind of observation that any further solution after these simple ones that we found must be of the form 64k plus 35. Now we'd like to show that there are in fact no solutions of this form and thus there are no further solutions. And so notice if a solution is 64k plus 35, then that tells us that we're looking for k such that 5 to the 64k plus 35 plus 3 is going to be a multiple or a power of 2, I should say. So I'll just write that as 2 to the a. Four, here we've got a is strictly bigger than 7 by our previous observation. Now what we'll do is pick another number, reduce modulo this other number, and look at the possible values of the left-hand side as well as the possible values of the right-hand side and show that those do not intersect. And it's just a matter of picking that number. I think maybe there's probably a lot of different numbers you can pick, but we'll pick 257. And so let's maybe note that 2 to the 8 is 256, but 256 is congruent to negative 1 modulo 257. And we wouldn't want to work anything smaller than mod 256 because that was what we used to build this. But now from this, we can calculate higher powers of 2 fairly easily. So notice 2 to the 9 will be 2 times 2 to the 8, or negative 2, mod 257. 2 to the 10 will be 2 times negative 2, so that is negative 4, and so on and so forth. So that allows us to make our list of powers of 2 pretty easily. So that means 2 to the a will be from the following set, plus minus 1. So 1 for 2 to the 16, just from squaring this, and then plus minus 2, so that would be like a equals 1 or a equals 9, and then plus minus 4, plus minus 8, plus minus 16, plus minus 32, plus minus 64, plus minus 128, and then plus minus 256, but plus minus 256 is the same thing as minus plus 1. So those are our powers of A. 
And now we'll do the same kind of thing, but we'll look for the possible values of this right hand side mod 257. And we'll do a little bit of reduction here. So this right hand side is 5 to the 64 all to the k times 5 to the 35 plus 3. Now, this is like, again, kind of grindy, again, based on this fact that this is a kind of old problem, but this five to the 35 can be calculated to be 14 mod 257. So you can do that with repeated squaring or something. And then five to the 64, again, maybe with repeated squaring is in fact, 16 mod 257. So really we have 16 to the K times 14 plus three mod 257. And there are fewer possibilities here. These only take on the following values. So let's see, we have 17, 36, and then 227, and then 246. And those are the only possibilities. And we'd like to reiterate here that all of these are occurring modulo 257, even though I have not encoded that in here. And now we can see that these guys do not intersect. So let's write that, don't intersect. But the only way for these two expressions to be equal is if they did intersect. So that means that this equation right here is never satisfied. Since this equation right here is never satisfied, that means that we in fact have no other solutions than these trivial solutions over here. And that's a good place to stop.